Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. On today's show, we're looking at some of the leading indicators to predict what might happen in the housing market three to six months from now. We're currently in the middle of a moratorium on both evictions and foreclosures. Let's talk about rentals first, and we'll talk about foreclosures on Tuesday's show. The moratorium on evictions doesn't mean that tenants don't need to pay rent anymore. It simply removes one of the remedies that landlords have in the case where tenants don't pay their rent. In most states and provinces, there's a landlord-tenant tribunal that deals with disputes between tenants and landlords. In Ontario, where I live, the Landlord-Tenant Board has a backlog of more than 80,000 cases. A tribunal is not handling eviction cases, except in severe cases where safety is threatened. But a little-known remedy within the tribunal system is to get the tribunal to render a judgment on arrears. The judgment simply states whether the tenant owes money to the landlord or not. The landlord still can't evict, but armed with the judgment, can take other collection actions. We see if the landlord can demonstrate that the tenant still has the means to pay and is using COVID-19 simply as an excuse not to pay, they could likely win a judgment in their favor. I'm going to cover two cases. The first case involved a student tenancy where four tenants had entered into the standard industry lease, the terms of which bind all the tenants on a joint and several basis. Prior to the lease commencement date, two of the four tenants informed the landlord that due to COVID-19 and the prospect of online classes, they would not require the tenancy any longer and wouldn't be moving in. The other two tenants agreed to honor the lease and paid the rent for the commencement of the tenancy. The defaulting tenants took the position the application should be dismissed since they never moved into the unit. They were not in possession. And an application for arrears, like an eviction application, can only be brought if the tenant's in possession. They argued in the alternative that the lease was frustrated due to COVID-19, and so therefore there was no valid lease in place. While the landlord filed an application in the name of all four tenants and obtained judgment against all four tenants for the rent arrears owed. The Landlord Tenant Board stated that the tenants were in possession even though they had not moved in, and further declared that the lease was not frustrated due to the fact that COVID-19 protocols eliminated the need for tenancy. In the legal analysis of its decision, the Landlord Tenant Board confirmed, first, that a lease begins on the commencement of the term, regardless whether the tenant actually moves in. Second, a tenant is in possession of the rental unit in circumstances where the landlord is ready to deliver the keys to the tenant and the terms of the lease give the tenant full control over occupancy of the rental unit, which in this case the standard lease clearly does. And third, the Landlord-Tenant Board confirmed that the lease was not frustrated, and just because the rationale was destroyed, the lease wasn't destroyed. Now, in the second case, a tenant proposed to vacate a unit without the proper notice on the basis of his fear that the risk of COVID-19 in a multi-residential building was high and he wished to move his family into a lower risk, lower density environment. The tenant stopped paying rent and, since arrears applications don't require advance notice, the landlord immediately applied to the Landlord Tenant Board for judgment for arrears. In its application, the Landlord Tenant Board's only function is to determine whether there are rent arrears or not. And furthermore, in contrast to an eviction application, where the tenant board has a discretion to delay or deny eviction and force landlords into a repayment plan for arrears, in an arrears application, there's no overriding discretion to refuse or delay a remedy. The only question that's being asked is whether rent is owing or not. In its analysis, the landlord tenant board stated, with respect to the health risks arising out of COVID-19, I'm sympathetic to the fear this pandemic has placed on everyday living practices. However, Once I've made a finding that the rent for May 2020 is owing, I don't have the jurisdiction to tell a landlord that he must forfeit the rent that is validly owing. Now, I'm not a lawyer, and the law varies widely from one jurisdiction to another. You definitely need to seek your own legal advice and examine the facts that are specific to your case. These two cases illustrate there might be other remedies apart from eviction. Don't just assume that a moratorium on evictions means that landlords are stripped of any tools to enforce a duly signed rental contract. 
As cases like these become more highly publicized, you may also start to see greater compliance. And the fact that Ontario has a pending eviction case affecting about 4.7% of all rental properties in the province, it's going to be many months, if not years, before these cases actually get heard before the tribunal. The real number could in fact be higher. You see, some landlords will not have even filed the paperwork if they believe the application will be denied. So as you think about that, go check out what your local rules are. Have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.